So hi everyone. Um, this is the ISLP Introduction to Statistical Learning using um, Python book club for the r ds online learning community. Today I'll be going over chapter six, um, linear model selection and regularization. So our learning objections are to select a subset of features to include in a linear model, and we'll compare and contrast the forward stepwise, backward stepwise, hybrid, and best subset methods of subset selection. And then we're also going to use shrinkage methods to constrain the flex flexibility of linear models. And we're going to compare and contrast the Lasso and ridge regression methods of shrinkage. And then we're also going to reduce the dimension dimensionality of data for a linear model. And we're going to compare and contrast the PCR and PLS methods of dimension reduction. And then we're going to explain the challenges that may occur when fitting linear models to high dimensional data. And for a complex, uh, the linear model is y by um, our predictors for our data. And why constrain or remove predictors? It's to improve prediction accuracy. We'll low up low bias by assumption, but p um, about equal to n is high variance, high variance, or meaningless when p is equal to n, or impossible when p is um, greater than n for with regards to like linear models. And then for model interpretability, we're going to remove or constrain irrelevant variables to simplify model. Okay, so subset selection, this is a group of methods that directly reduces the number of predictors by removing the ones that don't improve the test error. So um, best subset selection, and it's the most straightforward approach, basically you're trying all the predictors. And to perform best subset selection, we fit a separate least squares regression best subset for each possible combination of the p predictors. And that is we fill all p models model selection that contain exactly one predictor. So that's p choose two, which is equal to p times p minus one over two models that contain exactly two predictors and so forth. Uh, and the BSS algorithm is you start with the null model, which is the intercept only model, um, mu naught, and your k is equal to one, two through p or one through P, we fit all P choose K models containing K predictors and let mu sub K denote the best of the P choose K models where best is defined as having the lowest RSS or um, residual sum of squares, lowest deviance and etc. Now we choose the best model and M not through, or not, and mu not through M mu sub P where best is defined as having the lowest EP P sub P, BIC, AIC, cross validated MSE, or alternatively, the highest adjusted R squared. Um, so the pros of the best subset selection are it selects the best subset, but the cons are overfitting due to large search space, um, and it's computationally expensive and intractable for large, um, large P uh, numbers of predictors, where it's exponential to raise to the P, um, for example. So where P is 20, it yields over 1 million possibilities. So there's then forward stepwise selection, and we let um, mu not um, denote the model, no model, which is no predictors. And for k1 through p, fit all p minus k minus 1 predictors, not in model mu k mu sub k minus 1, and select the predictor that raises the r squared the most and add it to model mu sub k minus one to create model mu sub k. Now you select the model among mu naught through mu sub k that minimizes validation error or some estimate of it. And when p is equal to 20, the best subset selection requires fitting 1,048,576 models, whereas forward stepwise selection requires fitting only 211 models. So then we have backward step, stepwise subset selection, and we make sure that um, the number n is greater than p, where n is like the number of observations and p is like our predictors. And we let mu sub p denote the full model with all p predictors. And for k equal to p, p minus 1, so on to 1, 
we consider all k models that result in dropping a single predictor from m um, mu sub k, thus containing k minus one predictors. And we choose the best among these k models and christen it mu sub k minus one. And we select the model among mu naught through mu, mu sub k that minimizes validation error or some estimate of it. And then there's also hybrid searches where we combine the forward stepwise selection or backwards um, stepwise selection, um, subset selection. And variables are added sequentially, but after adding, you may also remove any variables that no longer provide an improvement in fit. So with choosing the best model, you have to punish models for having too many predictors because um, whatever, whatever the method, RSS decreases as R squared, um, RSS decreases or R squared increases as we go from mu sub k to mu sub k plus one, thus mu sub p always wins the contest. Um, and I think what they're saying here is like, the more predictors you have, you're always gonna kind of, um, like if you go by the regular R squared, you're always gonna get like a slightly better um, pr prediction. Um, but going with mu sub p doesn't provide either of the benefits, model interpretability or variance reduction um, overfitting, and we'll need to estimate test errors. Um, c sub p is equal to one over n of the RSS or the residual sum squares plus two k um, sigma squared hat, where sigma squared hat is an estimate of variance of the error, um, error epsilon associated with each response measurement. And typically estimated uses mu sub p, and if p is about equal to n, um, the estimate is going to be poor or even zero. And then we have the AIC, which is equal to, well, we have the AIC, we have the BIC, and then the adjusted R squared. Um, and then avoiding adjustment methods where sigma squared hat can be hard to come by, and adjustment methods can make assumptions about the true model, such as Gaussian errors. Um, so we cross-validate. And then we also have um, shrinkage methods, where shrinkage reduces variance and can perform variable selection. And substantial reduction in variance for a slight increase in bias. And it achieves these desired, uh, I'm not sure what that was. It achieves this by penalizing parameters and produce models between the null model and the OLS order, I think it's ordering at least squares estimates. And reviewing the OLS, we have these, um, these equations. And then for ridge regression, um, the lambda tuning parameter or hyperparameter um, for the shrinkage penalty, and there's one model parameter, um, lambda doesn't shrink. And I, yeah, I didn't get this far in my read, <laughs> so I apologize. Um, so yeah, so here we have figure 6.5, where in the black, let me see, the black, we have our um, squared bias, and then our variance in the green, and then the test mean squared error is the purple um, for the ridge regression predi predictions on a similar data set as a function of lambda. Um, and these, I, yeah. Um, the horizontal dashed line indicates the minimum possible MSE. Um, the purple crosses, purple crosses indicate the ridge regression models for which the MSC is smaller. Right. And note the decrease in test MSC, and further that is not computationally expensive. So one can show the computations required to solve 6.5 simultaneously for all values of lambda are almost identical to those for fitting a model using least squares. And then there's a note about pre-processing. And then we go on to the LISO, and it shrinks some coefficients to zero. Um, 
creating a sparse model. And then we have figure 6.6, .6, which is the standard standardized LSO co coefficients on the credit data set they're showing. And for how the LSO eliminates predictors, um, it can be shown that these shrinkage methods are equivalent to OS with constraint that beyond that depends on the type of shrinkage for the two parameters. And then I guess it's, let me see, absolute value beta one plus beta two is less than or equal to S for LSO. Um, beta one squared plus beta two squared is less than or equal to S for ridge. And I totally missed what S is. But yeah. Okay, so we have in the chat, Ricardo, Lasso L1 regularization can be used for feature selection because when coefficients reach zero, the feature is not relevant to the model. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, the Lasso constraints has corners at each of the axes, and so the ellipse will often intersect the constraint region at an axis. Yeah. So it's just that the comment is yeah. uh, comparing lasso with ridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the ridge regression, they tend to zero some of the some of some of the features that are highly correlated, yeah. they will tend to zero, but they won't be eliminated. They will have mm -hmm. some weight, okay, in the in the coefficient estimate. In the lasso, they reach zero. Okay, so you can mm -hmm. use lasso to extract a subset of features that are, you know, according to the question, that are the most relevant. So it's, it's, it mm -hmm. can be used as a, as a feature selection uh, algorithm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, so yeah, then we have the Bayesian interpretation. I'm not gonna attempt to read all the, the equations. Um, but the Gaussian prior for each beta corresponds to ridge regression, and double exponential prior to each beta corresponds to the so. And let's see, so figure 6.11, where left we have the ridge regression is the posterior mode for beta under a Gaussian prior. And then the right, the lasso is the posterior made for beta under a double exponential prior. Then we have dimension reduction methods, which transform predictors before use. Um, so we have Z1 through ZM um, represent M less than P linear combinations of original P predictors. Um, so yeah, and the linear regression using the transform predictors can often outperform linear regression using the original predictors. And we have like some of the math there where the dimension which reduction constrains beta sub j um, and can increase bias but significantly reduces variance when m is less than p and then we have principal components regression um pca chooses i forgot what that is pca chooses i forgot what that is to capture as much variance as possible and we'll be discussing more detail in chapter 12 um, and that's principal components analysis, PCA. Um, the first principal component is equal to the direction of the data is that along which the observations vary most. Um, the second principal component is orthogonal to the first and captures most next most variation, et cetera. And it creates new predictors that are more independent and potentially fewer, which improves test MSE but note that this does not help improve interpretability. Um, all the P and all P predictors are still involved. And then we have figure 6.15, hmm, 6.19. So um, we mitigate overfitting by reducing the number of variables and assume that the direction in which X shows the most variation are directions associated with the variation in Y. And when this assumption is true, principal components regression can do very well. And note that 
PCR isn't feature selection, and its principal com components depend on all um, predictors, and more it's more like ridge regression than so and it's best to standardize variables before principal components regression. And then we have another example. Um, in the figures below, PCR fits in on simulated data are shown, and both were generated using n equals 50 observations for p equals 45 predictors. Um, the first data set responses, we have a comment. Okay, our, yeah. Ricardo shared an article about the algebra behind principal components analysis. Thank you. And then, yeah. So then, so PCR improves over OLS, at least in the first case. And let's see. Yeah, where the black is the squared bias, pink is the test MSC, and the green is the variance. Yeah, in the second case, the improvement is modest, perhaps because the assumption that the directions of maximal variation in predictors doesn't correlate well with variations in the response assume, assumed by PCR. And when the variation in X isn't strongly correlated, correlated with variation in Y, P, PCR isn't as effective. Then we have partial least squares, where partial least squares, or PLS, is like PCA, but supervised, um, we use Y to choose. And in the figure, um, population is more related to Y than ad is, or ad spending. And supervision can reduce bias um, versus PCR, but can also increase variance. Now, some considerations in high dimensions. Um, we have figure 6.2 where modern data can have a huge number of predictors. Um, and when the number of predictors is less than, or, or the number of observations is less than or equal to the number of predictors, linear regression memorizes the training data, but can suck on test data. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have figure 6.23, where it's a simulated data set with n is equal to 20 training observations and all unrelated to L. We have the number of variables, we have the R squared, training MSC, and the number of the test MSC. And then Lasso versus dimensionality. Um, reducing flexibility, um, all the stuff in this chapter can help. It, it's important to choose good tuning parameters for whatever method you use. And features that aren't associated with Y increase test error, um, the curse of dimensionality, and your fit to noise and training and noise and tests is different. So when P is greater than N, never use tr the training MSC. Um, P values are R squared as evidence of goodness of fit because they're likely to be wildly different from the test values. And then we have figure 6.24, which shows you the difference between like having 20 predictors to like 2,000 predictors. And I'm not sure what the different output sets are, honestly. Um, but yeah, I think that is the end. Of, oh, wait. Exercises. I don't know if these are the R exercises or not. But yeah, I think for the most part, that's the end of the chapter. Very short. I wasn't as prepared for this as I would have liked. I don't know if anyone has any questions or any other comments with regard to it. At least I don't have any any questions or comments. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, thank you for presenting, Nidia. No worries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.